morning and welcome to Wednesday. Long time no see. I am here and I am ready and I just want to catch up with you all. I feel like I haven't done that in a long time. Lots of weeks off this year. Yeah, I have someone here, first person. Why don't you say hi in the comments and I can see your beautiful face as I read your name, which is always good. And Katie. Hello, Joe. I feel like I've seen, seen some of you, but not others. Good morning. Hope that you're having a good start to your Wednesday. Hello, Steph. The weather is beautiful. I'm currently locked up in the house though because there was monkeys and craziness. Eyebrows. Thanks. <laughs> yes. Eyebrows do help, guys, because I'm actually not wearing anything other than mascara and moisturizer now. And somehow I look semi decent. Hello, Keegs. Welcome. So lovely to see you all. Oh, Kruger, that's going to be nice. Dubs and Bridge are actually there. How divine. I'm going to enjoy that, Katie. I've actually only ever been to Kruger once. It was on our honeymoon, but we got so, so violently ill that we ended up having to leave. So it is somewhere I really want to go. Um, how is everybody? I'm actually battling ch a chest. I don't know what's going on here. Reporting live when I write. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, craziness. Amazing what you can do, hey? These days. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling so great. Hello, Tanya. So I'm just laying low at home just to see whether it's just my normal asthma stuff or something else. Hello, Jill. I never know these days because I really have been struggling with asthma, so I can't, I can't figure out. Am I sick? Am I not? Am I sick? Am I not? Anyway, it's all good. I have my children around, so it may get a bit noisy. Well, two of the four, two have gone away with my mom, which is amazing. And it's really weird only having two kids in the house. <laughs> it's like weird, weird, weird. Hello, Linda. Welcome. Um, yeah, it's weird. I'm so used to so much more chaos, and this week has been so calm and quiet. I've actually like not gone to the office. I just work every day from home, and I can do that. It's weird. Hello, Jilly. So lovely to see you. I'm drinking very average coffee here this morning. I need to go out and get something worth drinking. And what else can I tell you? It's been a good month for me. I've taken some time just to focus my energy towards our kids' church, which I'm currently overseeing. And um, just trying to invest a lot of my energy into what's being taught, the culture that's there, raising volunteers who can nurture and facilitate that space. So it has been busy, but good. And it is amazing to have the boys here on Tea with Tess. Can you just let me know your highlight? I loved how each of them brought something to the table. Um, obviously, Stuart with his incredible teaching gift and his amazing Scottish accent. John brought his baby girl, Simmer, and just such an incredible word from him. Mark Stone with his flowers, and um, there's Joel, guys. I'm sorry, I get noisy. And um, also JD, who sang for us. So we really were treated by those men, and so I wanted to just give them a little shout out and celebrate them. Um, I really did feel that each of them brought something so unique and significant and the only brief I'd given them was like if you could if you had one thing left um, to say to the woman in your world what would you say and I think they did a great job and so I'm grateful to them and it was just nice to have a little break and to have some testosterone in the space I think it's healthy and wise and important I've also been eating these they're somewhat horrendous but they're addictive dried air dried pineapple anyway that's just something you can know about me in this moment i go through food fads and obsessions and one of them is this like 
crunchy and very sour. Very sour. Anyway, so it's been a busy month. We had this last weekend. We had our men's event. Ray Bevan has been with us. Incredible gift to the body of Christ. If you were not able to watch his message on Sunday, I would encourage you to do so. I think it will bless you. He is someone who not only has a profound ability and gifting and anointing to preach, he carries his messages. Hello? Yeah, those are on the wrong feet, and Kenzie needs to help you now because I'm going to talk, okay? Mm, the struggle's real, guys. I feel like literally like I'm in lockdown with the kid. Anyway, so you need to go and watch that message because he really does carry something, and it was a profound, real thought-provoking um, Sunday, specifically in the way that he ministers his message, which I think is quite key because we can... You know, there are a lot of things that you can say and fancy words that we can use, but it's another thing to minister the word. And I love how he opened up his message on Sunday. He said, you know, the fancy words and eloquent English are not going to do anything. It's the word of God that sets to work, that goes to work for itself and does what it will intend to do. And I love how he said... Um, use this word actually it's like something i'm gonna like keep saying he said this he said the word he, oh, he said the holy spirit watches over his words to perform it watches over the word to perform it so as i speak to you today and we're going to be looking at a scripture of philippians it's not my words or my human ability that is going to do anything of substance and value in your heart and your life this morning it is the Holy Spirit, who watches over the word and wills it to do the work that it was intended to do. And so you can take heart in that. It doesn't rest on you and I manufacturing an outcome. It rests on the work of the Holy Spirit. And he is with us. The screen is no barrier to his presence. And even as I sat here this morning preparing, I felt, I felt close to God, like he was with me in this house, messy and you know, very ordinary house, he's with us. And I really felt that that was going to carry through. And so I'm going to be sharing a scripture that actually Ray shared in his preach on Sunday. And it really spoke to me. And I, he, he, he made a challenge. He said, if you do nothing else in this next year, take this scripture, this exact scripture, write it down, stick it on every surface you can find, Write it in your journal, bookmark it in your Bible, learn it off by heart, and just say it every day. Meditate on it, munch on it, mouth it, um, and, and watch what God will do. And so I've been doing that since Sunday, just taking the scripture and, and, and meditating on it. And meditating is not some like weird woosa thing, you know, that we do by crossing our legs and closing our eyes. Meditate is... Um, if you look at the um, the Greek of hello, you look so handsome. Come show everyone how handsome you are, and then you're gonna go with Kins. Look here, say hi everybody. Hello everybody. It's a happy July soon. Happy July soon. <laughs> okay. Say bye. Okay. I'm going to come back later. <laughs> yes, he will, guys. He's coming back. Um. If you look at the word meditate in scripture within the Greek, it actually likens, it's in its description, it's likened to a cow that chews the cud. So you know like a cow has eight, I think eight stomachs or six stomachs, I can't remember, four maybe, I don't know. Some of you had a mum, <laughs> nice to see you online. Um, it has to chew and chew and chew to allow that food to move from stomach to stomach to stomach. And it's that chewing that allows the digestion of the food. That is what meditating is like. We chew the cud, we chew, and 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 we chew in order to digest that word for it to become imprinted upon our hearts. So for most of us, we're taking the Bible, we flick it open, and we're like, nah, I'm going to read Matthew 6 today. That's going to be awesome. And then we read it, and we move on. We read the whole chapter, and we're like, wow, I feel so good, and we move on. And then the next day, we don't read it. And maybe we pick it up again in 10 days' time, and we don't read that. We go and pick something else that looks interesting. 
So we're not actually getting the benefit from what the word has the power to do because we're just breezing over it. And I'm not saying that you, you can read something once and it can't have an impact, it can. But I've found in my experience, most often, hello Morena, that it's through the consistent chewing over and mulling over and meditating over the word that allows it to take root and sink into the very depths of my heart and give me a foundation to stand upon that I can draw on in times that are not so secure and stable. And so I want to take the scripture, his challenge to really read it every day, to learn it off by heart, to stick it everywhere, and that's what I'm doing, and, and share it with you this morning and encourage you to do the same thing, because I, I do believe this, this one profound truth could have an incredible impact on our lives. And the thing is, is that I was saying to someone this morning, she's, you know, had a, something happen and it's, it's hard. And I was just saying to her, you know what, we really do need the anchor Jesus in our lives right now more than ever before, because the sea of life is incredibly turbulent. You don't know what you're going to wake up to one day or the next. And we can't hope and wish that better days will come or it's going to get better and and have that is what we hold on to our anchor needs to be jesus because there's really nothing else that's certain and firm and stable and secure like him and for me personally i'm in a season that is turbulent it is hard it is emotional it is um it's painful and i feel like right now i don't know much Feel like I'm being schooled by life again and I think difficult circumstances and painful moments can do that they take the support structures the belief systems that we've perhaps built over time and they can unravel them and they can pull them apart and it's not to say that our beliefs are wrong and now we have to find a whole new belief system it's just that the structure the scaffolding perhaps needs to be rebuilt in a way so we can stand upon something new to move forward into the future and so I feel like right now I'm, I'm, in that, I'm in that rebuilding phase and that restructuring of my thinking because my whole life looks different now and I'm seeing things in a whole new way. And, and yet, although I don't feel like I know much, I know that because of the word, I have much. I don't need the knowledge. I don't necessarily even need my built up belief system over time, I have something that is incredibly firm and secure that I can stand upon even now and find the stability and strength that I need in a rather turbulent time. And that's why it's so important for me that when I hear a word from, from Ray, for example, I don't just go, yay, that's a nice word and move on. I listen and I write notes and then I go back and I go, okay, well, what? Clearly in that moment, if you look at my notes, I'll, I'll write them and they're scribbled everywhere, like you can see, and then suddenly something will jump at me and I usually put a star, star there because I, I want to remember when I go back that that moment spoke. So I put a star there and then I, I, I just pay attention to that moment. And for me, that moment on Sunday was from within the scripture of Philippians 1. And I want to read it to you and then I want to unpack a little bit of it together and just leave you with something. And then I'd like you to go and think about it for yourself. Go and read about it. Go and ask the Holy Spirit, what, what is this saying to me? Why is this important for right now? What do I need to know? What do I need to take home? And then, you know, move from there. And so it says this in Philippians 1. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. It gives us a little bit more to take forward and pull apart. It says... Um, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed, to all the saints, God's people in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, including the overseers and deacons. It says this, grace to you and peace and a calm and spiritual well-being from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in every remembrance of you. I always, always offering every prayer of mine with joy and with specific requests for all of you. Thanking God for your participation and your partnership, both your comforting fellowship and gracious contributions in advancing the good news regarding salvation from the first day you heard it until now. And then this is where we're gonna to land today. I am convinced and confident of 
this very thing, that he, that he who has begun a good work and you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. As I was reading over this again this week and this morning, I felt to say this. There are going to be seasons in our lives when we don't know what to pray. We don't know how to pray. We are, we don't necessarily even understand why we're praying. I want to encourage you in those seasons to pick up the Bible and pray what they prayed. These apostles, these disciples, these followers of Jesus who were with his very person, who who saw supernatural things, who, who got incredible first-hand revelation because of the presence of Jesus, because they walked with him, they prayed bold prayers. They prayed specific prayers. They prayed with intention. And their lives weren't easy. They didn't have this like super smooth sailing existence. They were persecuted extensively and quite horrifically. And yet they prayed with boldness and with clarity and with intention. And so right now, I am struggling to find the words to pray. So for example, I want to pray for you. That is, I believe, part of the mandate of this environment. I believe I'm called to pray for this community. You will know, I write things in my journal. I ask you to put your hands up. I write your name down. I pray for you. I do that. I don't just say I'm doing that. I do that. There has been a season of late where I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray. I feel a little lost in this regard. And so this has given me such a handle to hold on to. I don't need to muster up the strength or the cleverness or the, um, you know, the, 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 the faithfulness, perhaps to pray for my community. I can pray what they prayed and know that it will produce incredible things in your life. And he says this, grace to you and peace in a calm and spiritual being from our God, Lord Jesus Christ. When you don't know what to pray, pray the word. So I pray grace over you. I pray peace in you. From who? From Jesus. Grace from our Father. Peace from Jesus. Because it's truly what you need in this season. You may think you need a whole lot of things. But actually what we truly need is the grace of God and the peace of Christ. And then it says here, always offering every prayer of mine with joy and with specific requests for all of you. I, I ask you every week, can I pray for you? Let me know. Send them through. Send them through a DM. I don't know. Go on to our link tree. Go onto our app. Submit a prayer request. We have an incredible team. I have access to those prayer requests. I will see them. I will pray for you. So let your specific request be known. I want to pray for you, and that is what I will do. And then it says, he prays a prayer of thanks. What does he pray for? What does he thank God for? He says, I thank God for their participation. So what do I do? Thank you, Jesus, for the participation of these people who show up every Wednesday. I don't know why they keep showing up. We've been going for nearly two and a half years. It is really, really quite odd that we would continue to do this. And it's online and it doesn't make sense. And yet it does. So I thank God for your participation. Bless their participation, Lord. Would you give to them tenfold for their, for their presence? For their partnership, I pray. And thank God for your partnership. It's just here in the Word. I'm literally just praying what they pray. I thank God <coughs> for their comforting fellowship. You have been a, a comforting presence in my life. You have showed up as friends in my world. You've prayed for me. You've encouraged me. You've exhorted me. You've edified me. So I thank God for that. It's here. It's in the Bible. Philippians 1. And I just echo it. I pray it. Because their prayers are powerful. I don't have to try and come up with something new. And I pray for their gracious contributions, the way that you have poured into my life. Many of you have invested generously, not necessarily financially. I'm not asking for that. This has never been about that. But you have invested in my life generously through your time, with your words, with gifts, with flowers, with presents. And I'm grateful for that. And so I express it and I thank God for that and ask him to bless. Bless you. Bless your contribution, bless your partnership, bless your participation. And so that's just one of the, the first thing I wanted to say. If you do not know what to pray in a season, open up the Bible. Go and study the way these people prayed and then echo it. Pray.
pray over your schools. Pray over the teachers. Pray over our government. Pray over your family. Use the boldness of the prayers of the apostles to shape the, the things that you ask for in the season. And, and I think we're going to be surprised by the way that God shows up in our lives. And then this is a scripture I want to land on today. We're going to unpack it briefly. And then I'm going to send you on your way to have a beautiful Wednesday. He says this, For I am convinced and confident. To be convinced is to be firmly, is to firmly believe the truth of something. To be persuaded heavily towards something. So he says, I am convinced and I'm confident. To be confident is to have a feeling of certainty. So he is not only convinced, he is absolutely persuaded towards the truth of something. He's also confident. He has a feeling of certainty in the outcome of what he's about to say. He says, of this very thing. Pause that he, not that we, that I, that my church, that my pastors, that my counselor, that my effort, that my reading of the Bible, my study, my service, no, that he, who's he talking about? Jesus, that he, it's all on him, he who has begun who has begun. What does that mean? He's already started. God started a work in you before the foundations of the earth were set in place. He already knew you. He already had a destiny of you in mind. And then when it all fell apart and it looked like all was lost, he sent his only son to redeem you so that you could fulfill the destiny, purpose, and plan that was originally intended for your life before the foundation of the earth was set in place. So Paul is saying, I am convinced and I am confident of this very thing that he, Jesus, who has begun a good work in you, who has begun, it's already started and it's continuing. It doesn't end, you know, when you're having a bad day or you're going through a season where you're unsure or your scaffolding of your life feels like it's come undone. No, he who has begun a good work in you will continue will continue to com to perfect and complete it, to perform, to finish it, to go over and above what we expect. That is the, the definition of that word complete within the Greek. To go over and above what we expect until the day of Christ returns. What is the scripture telling us? Hello, Janelle. What is the scripture telling us? And I think it's important that we understand and know that there is, there is a, a, a pivotal, crucial truth in here that could shape the whole of the way that we live our lives. And it's this. I'm going to use Ray Bevan's words, paraphrase, because I thought they were brilliant. The completion of your destiny has absolutely nothing to do with your faithfulness. With your faithfulness. The completion of my destiny, purpose, and life's call. The things that God has set before me to run towards have absolutely nothing to do with my faithfulness to fulfill it. It says, for I am convinced that he will complete the good work that he's already started and begun in me all the way until Jesus returns. It all rests on his faithfulness. We get it back to front. We think that we've got to prove and show up and work hard and lay it all out on the table and make our mark. But the reality is, it is not us who are faithful. It is him. And the Bible tells us that even when we are faithless, he is faithful. And so, I don't know about you, but that for me is an anchor because right now I don't feel very faithful at all. In fact, if you were to, you know, build a little timeline graph of my life and, you know, measure my level of faithfulness right now, I'm on the decline. Yes, I am because life is confusing for me right now and there are days when I just don't know what it's all for. And I wonder, 
what exactly I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And it's, it's dismantling and it's humbling and it's no, I'm not freaking out about it. I'm not like, oh my goodness, having a midlife crisis type thing and you know, let's all panic, Tess doesn't know what's going on in the world. No, I just lost my dad. It's, it's just a big deal and I refuse to run from this moment but in order to be fully present in it, it's causing some confusion in my life. And some days that looks scary for people. What's going on with Tess? I'm not worried about myself. I'm not. Truly and honestly, I'm not worried about myself because it's not me who has to muster up the faithfulness to fulfill my calling and work on this planet. He is already doing it. He's already doing it. He's already done it. Right now, this is just a little blip in the road for me. It is. It's just a little minute where I figure life out and I learn a new way to exist without what I existed with for so long. And Ray said something really powerful to me yesterday, which was really quite profound. He said, Tess, I know this is hard for you, but I want you to keep doing in the darkness what you did in the light. And so coupled with this incredible truth, like it is God's faithfulness that artworks who I am and who I will become and what I was destined for is this incredible peace offering that I just need to keep doing in this dark moment what I've been doing in the light. I don't have to f try and come up with something new. I can just keep going and keep doing what I've always done in this moment and I know that he will lead me through. And I know that I'm not the only one walking through dark things. And so my encouragement to you this morning is not to try and muster up the faithfulness that you need for your season or for your circumstance or for your life or for your calling. It's to remember that he is the faithful one. Our only response and requirement is to believe, is to respond with I believe. That's all I did yesterday. That's all I've been doing every day. I just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe that you are the faithful one. I'm coming. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to finish up. Anyway, I want to finish with this. You are a carrier of Christ, even when you can't feel it or see it. He is always at work in you. You are a carrier of Christ, even when you can't feel it or see it. He's always at work in you. And so take that in this morning, into your day, into your week, into your job, into your family, into the things that you are positioned in and entrusted with and just show up with yourself and trust and know that he is working it all out. Amen? Amen. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. Again, if there are things specifically that you would like me to pray for, you can submit those through my DM. You can go onto our app and submit a prayer request. I do see them. I do ask for them. And I, I, I pray for you often. Even when I don't know what to pray. End up praying in tongues. <laughs> because actually I don't think we need to be so complicated about this thing. Sometimes we just need to show up as we are and trust that he is doing it already. And he doesn't need our words. He invites us to participate with him. Amen. Okay, I thank you, Jesus, for this incredible group of women. I thank you that they have this amazing ability of showing up each week and presenting themselves to you, really ready and willing to receive. And so my prayer, Holy Spirit, is that you would begin to 
marinate their hearts in the truth that you are the faithful one, Father. You are the faithful one, Jesus. You are the one who finished the work. You are the one who continues to complete in us what was already begun before the beginning of time. And so I pray that this would be something that is engraved upon our hearts as we step into a space where there is no striving and there is no strife because we are partnering with the truth of God, the truth of God that tells us that he is faithful to finish, he is faithful to complete it. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus. We take hold of this anchor this morning, we hold tightly to it, and we praise your name, and we honor you, and we give you all of the glory, and we pray that you'll bless our unity and bless our togetherness with the just the incredible kindness of heaven, the grace of the Father. And I pray blessing and protection over these women as they step into the rest of the week in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, girlies, I will see you next week. Let's keep going. Let's, I don't know. Who knows what God has for us in this next season. But I'm expectant and I'm excited to share with you some of the things that I believe God is showing me as he tends to the very space that my heart is in. Amen? Okay, love you and I'll see you soon.